So welcome to Delft. Welcome back, I should say, to Delft. Thank you. Um, you are here um, because you won the Alumni Award, the first one that we are giving out. Yes. Uh, so what was maybe your first reaction, if you can indulge in yeah. your talent? My first reaction was, wow, what a privilege uh, and honor. Um, I know how important YHE has evolved from, um, particularly having collectively studied here in over four years, three different courses um, from 1988 to 1994 span. Now, to be informed that I'm the, the first, in fact, winner, that was uh, one of the best days of my life, particularly my professional life, because I'm aware that the, the alumni um, population here is over 14,000, and um, just a drop in the ocean. So I got very, felt very honored that I was identified and uh, I still am keen to know <laughs> exactly what would have been the most striking fact at that time mm -hmm. I was fished out for this time. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think in terms of uh, the award, what, what it could mean in the future for alumni? I think the award is a driving force to instill some sense of appreciation of what is being offered here. Uh, my conviction is that IIG is very good at translating theory to practice. And I think the world is a means or an illustration of the tangible things that have been achieved on the ground by an alumnus that, uh, from this institution. So it serves as a, as a role model one. It also promotes the institution to the rest of the world who may have doubts because the case example has been put on the ground. So I think looking back at the career, uh, at your own career, but kind of up until now, um, can you maybe list a few examples that you are really very proud of? By virtue of being trained from here? Yes, that would be nice. I have a good, I have been fortunate to have a good combination of education here. Um, like I said, from 1980 to 89, when IHE Delft was still in 95 out of Delft, I was privileged to have been, to follow a program here called uh, Hydraulic Engineering for Upland Areas. The reason being I was sponsored by uh, a project that was funded by the Dutch government in Zambia, in Western province, where we were developing and regulating the canals that crosses the Zambezi River from one end here in Mongo to the other end called Kalamu. And then when I went back, we continued with the project. However, the, my government felt that uh, there was need for me to move on to another project that I just started in Zambia, in, 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 in Osaka, funded by uh, or supported by the World Meteorological Organization. You may recall that the World Meteorological Organization has been working very closely with the Institute for a long time. Mm -hmm. So they again independently identified me to go and do more studies in hydrological engineering. So 1991-92 I came back to do uh, hydrological engineering and that led for me to now do the full course when it has just been introduced by by then uh, Dr. Hugh Salmai. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was one of the first students that graduated in water resource management in 1994. Now in terms of applying this, the concept of water resource management you just don't and we are still now we're grappling with the integrated water resource management. And towards the end, we are talking of transboundary water management, which is now brings the different countries together. So I've been engaged at different levels, at, uh, at home, 
information develop, uh, data um, you know, analysis, mm -hmm. development and processing, which was hydrological or hydrometeorological, uh, is one of the things that helped me build the, the information base in Zambia or contribute to the building of that and publication of the annual hydrological uh, uh, reports. And then I got the chance to work more in the with the Southern Africa Development Community, where I first led the development of the, the Regional Strategic Action Plan um, in from the period 1997 to uh, 1999. Now, the strategic plan has formed the base of the water sector development in the SARC. Now we have, I think it has moved on to phase three and they are developed and implementing the uh, phase three of the strategic um, uh, action plan. When I left there, I had the chance now to work with the, uh, with the World Bank in Nairobi, where again I helped set up what the institution called the Africa Water Forum. And um, Fortunately, the Water Forum uh, worked very closely with UNEP to develop what we are calling AMCAL, African Ministerial Council on Water. And one of the first activities that the Africa Water Forum did uh, facilitate was the convening of the first steering committee of AMCAL. And, and then the process to select the secretariat, which, self, which is hosted by and the government of Nigeria in Abuja. And from there then, it's a speak term, as, uh, as it were. Then I went back home, I was in a freelance uh, consultant and I worked on several fronts with the European Union on the issues dealing with the um, disaster preparedness. Uh, fortunate that I was engaged as part of the ex-ante evaluation team we went through all the key countries that are more vulnerable to disasters, uh, emanating from uh, cyclones and floods and drought. And these were uh, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Mozambique, Madagascar, and Seychelles. It's this report that gave the best now for the European Union to start funding the disaster uh, uh, preparedness uh, uh, intervention called DPECO for Africa for the first time. And of course I've worked with the FAO on uh, disaster and emergency intervention in the Horn of Africa. That gave me a good chance to appreciate the issues in Ethiopia, Kenya and also Somalia. Um, and also internally within Zambia, the chance to work with the Irish Government to to deal with integrating of water resource management into the water supply uh, program is um, is taken for granted in the field of water supply. But um, when you go in the village, people need water, so you drill your pole, boom, 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 and there's the water. But people don't eat water; they drink water. People need money because they need also to improve their livelihoods. And so I did recommend that we need to incorporate the, the other associated usage of water, apart from drinking in water supply, so that the design of a, the, the hand pump itself should be able to, be, to, use, to make use of other money-generating ventures that will help the society to have additional income to do other aspects. Rather than just to say the water is here, how you use it, that's not my business. So water can be used for agriculture, it can be used for cleaning, it can be used for so many. And I thought that was a, a very good uh, intervention. I've worked with the um, GIZ to help uh, you know, respond to the World Commission on Dams report. Um, and I 
if we know that how the stakeholders have been so vulnerable to some of the infrastructure development. But I think a fair balance has to be struck. We need the development, we need the environment as well, and we need to safeguard the welfare of our people. So I was very fortunate to, to develop and draft the SADC position as a response to the World Commission on Dams. I came to now deal with the, uh, the uh, Danida on uh, issues relating to the least developed countries fund in terms of adaptation. That helped me, that initiative helped me influence the consideration of water in the climate change debate. Because when we were in 2010 in, in Bonn, uh, we had a side event where we were following the, the negotiators to look at the evaluation that we were overseeing. I was part and parcel of that team which was managing the evaluation of the least development, uh, develop, developing countries fund. With the hindsight of my experiences from the developing world, but representing in this group, IIE, IID was the one that was carrying out this. And it dawned to me, during break, when we met the negotiators, I couldn't see none of my experts there from water. Then it dawned that the daughter of water has no parents here, and yet decisions have been made without them there. So I initiated an internal uh, communication through the Global Water Partnership uh, for Southern Africa and globally to stimulate the need for us to get involved as water experts in climate change um, issues, adapt particular adaptation, and also the biodiversity and the certification. In, because in these, the main you know, uh, cross-cutting issues were, but the world has no voice. The decision has been made or not. And I think eventually you've seen a lot of in, encouraging in interaction of, uh, of uh, the, the, the water um, knowledge and, um, and expertise in this. And I felt that in a small way I had a chance to isolate this as a, something that needed to be brought to, to light. And now finally, uh, when I was uh, identified to lead uh, the process of establishing the Zambezi Water Course Commission, uh, its interim secretariat, which I head right now, and also the requisite organs that have been developed uh, that have taken a lead a role to do. So I think in summary, that is uh, something that I felt is very critical to share with the, with the rest that uh, the leader. I've jumped a number of things in between, but those are the key aspects that I feel are 